Hey guys, welcome to our online service. My name is Milan. Today we're starting a new series called It's Personal. It's gonna be a five week series where we're gonna talk about a short little guy in the Bible named Zacchaeus. Today Tyler is gonna talk about how it's personal because Jesus knows your name. We are so glad that all of you are here. And if you're new, we hope you enjoy the service and want to come back each week. We would love to have you as a part of our Roots family. Now let's get started. Hey, my name is Dylan and I am a senior at Lanier High School. I'm really into FCA and cheer and I'm gonna be sharing something personal. Okay, not that personal, just personal because you know, I'm a person and it means something to me. What most people don't know is my last name is actually Lao. It's Chinese while my family is mainly Filipino. My first name's a little different too because Dylan is usually stereotyped as a boy's name. But I really like my name because it makes me feel unique and empowered which is why it's kind of annoying whenever substitute teachers call me Dylan Leo. When someone uses my name and makes an effort to say it right, it lets me know that they actually see me and accept me for who I am. Maybe it doesn't sound like a big deal, but you can't really know me unless you know me as Dylan Lau. It's not just a name, it's personal. Hello everyone, I'm so happy that you're watching us online today. And we are starting a brand new series called It's Personal. And I think many of our friendships and relationships around us really stay surface level. We don't allow them to actually go deep. But I really believe there is something important and special about getting personal with the people around you. This series is all about how to do that. We're going to look at the life of Zacchaeus and how Jesus gave us a perfect example of how to get personal with others, just like the way that he got personal with Zacchaeus. So let's start with an awkward moment, shall we? And I remember when I was in sixth grade and I had just started middle school, and back then I would always take the bus to school. And on my bus, there, there were the really popular eighth graders. And oh man, I looked up to them. And the eighth graders got to sit in the back of the bus, the furthest away from the driver. And I couldn't wait till I was in eighth grade where I could graduate to the back of the bus. And the little sixth graders, they had to sit in the front. And the seventh graders, they got to sit right in the middle, just by the exit door. But one day, one of the eighth grade guys, Lewis, recognized me because he knew who my sister was. I mean... My sister was a lot older than me, and she had just graduated from high school, but she was popular because she was a cheerleader. And Lewis thought my five years older than him sister was hot. And because of that, he looked at me with favor. And as a sixth grader, he let me sit three rows from the back just because I had a hot sister. And now that I was friends with Lewis, he was now my ticket to the popular kids area in the back of the bus. And I was going to be known and I was going to be cool. And now I had an eighth grade friend who gave me some perks. So as I sat back there, he decided it was his job to introduce me to his friends. He introduced me to all the eighth grade girls that also sat in the back of the bus and I learned their names and what stop that they got off at. And then it came time for Lewis to introduce me. And with an awkward look on his face, he said, and this is, is, wait, what was your name again? Ouch, I know, it hurts so bad. And I got up and I ran back to the front of the bus just completely crying. Just kidding, I didn't actually do that, but it was my turn to respond, so what did I do? I tried to play it cool. But in that five seconds, it became clear to me, Lewis didn't really want to be friends with me. He just thought that my sister was cool, and I had sat on the bus with him, and he didn't even know my name, actually. So have you ever been there? Like, where you thought that you were tight with somebody and you figured out your friendship or your relationship wasn't as deep as you thought it was? It's not a great feeling because deep down, I think we all live with this expectations that relationships shouldn't be fake. They shouldn't be shallow. 
And they shouldn't make you feel like you could spend a huge amount of time with someone and then be easily forgotten. And regardless of whether or not you're a really social person, I think that we'd all agree that when it comes to our relationships with our friends or the people we spend a lot of time with, we want real ones, not fake ones, right? And I don't want fake friends, friends who feel like they have to pretend around me, who don't care as much as they act like they do, or who don't even really know me. Whether it's the people who you hang out with from the band or your teammates, the people you have a group chat with, we all want more than that. In other words, we want our relationships to be personal. There's a cheat code, by the way, or a shortcut to figuring out if a relationship is personal. It's easy. And you know how I know if somebody is not personal with me? They call me some generic nickname like buddy or chief, or they say, hey, yo, guy. And we've probably experienced this kind of fakeness before. Somebody acts like they care about you, acts like they're your friend, and they keep referring to you as guy or fam or something other than your actual name. And people knowing our names matters, right? It makes us feel important, makes us feel known. It makes us feel like there's a connection between us and the person who knows our name. Nobody wants a fake friend or a fake relationship, but you know what the opposite of fake is? It's real, right? And I totally agree when it comes to sunglasses, art, and anything else that I can buy from wish.com. The opposite of fake is real. But when it comes to relationships, I think there's a better word. Actually, I know there's a better word. When it comes to people, the opposite of real is personal. It's personal. Think about it. Somebody can be real without knowing you personally. They can be cool without being close to you. They can even know something about you, like what math class that you're in, or they may even notice something like what, band, what brands matter and, that you wear, but that doesn't make it personal. Being personal puts somebody in a whole different category, and that's what this series is all about. If I ask you to name everyone you can think of who knows your name, how many do you think would be on that list? And I also wonder, if you did make that list, would you put God on it? And here's the thing. Some of you may have grown up hearing that God knows your name. And there are a bunch of examples in the Bible about how God knows us that closely. Like when Jesus says this in Luke 12, 7. He says, indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Seriously, that is getting pretty personal, right? While we all might think it's a little strange to know how many hairs are on our head, some of us struggle with the idea of God really knowing us. Maybe you feel like, like, does God really know me? Or is he more like that football coach that just says, oh, hey, buddy, for four straight years. But there can be a lot of reasons why you feel that way about God. You might feel like he doesn't seem personal because you can't see God and you can't hear him talk back when you do try to pray. Or maybe you don't really know much about God or even care much about God. So it feels strange to think that he'd know your name and care about you. Maybe you've met Christians who don't seem to care about getting to know you. So why would God care? Maybe you think he doesn't seem personal because if he's real, if he's just so big, if he created everything... What makes us so important that he would know us personally and individually? I mean, let's pretend that we all believe in a God who created everything. Are we to believe that a God that created this knows my name? And I'm a huge space nerd. Like, I always like to learn about constellations and galaxies and nebulas and whatnot. And one of my favorite classes in college was astronomy. But I want you to take a look at this picture. This right here is the Sombrero Galaxy. It looks like a sombrero, right? Not kidding. It's, that's its name. The Sombrero Galaxy is a lenticular 
galaxy in the constellation Virgo found 31,100,000 light years from Earth. The God that created this knows my name. And the God that created the butterfly nebula, that's pretty crazy right there. The butterfly nebula, it's a planetary nebula in the constellation Scorpius. It's the most complex ever observed in the planetary nebulae. Like, that's plural for nebulas. And the central star is one of the hottest stars known with a surface temperature in excess of 450,000 degrees. Am I expected to believe that the God that created that knows me personally? And this last one is called the Pillars of Creation. The Pillars of Creation. That's such a cool picture. And it's made of an interstellar gas and dust in the Eagle Nebula, specifically the Serpent's constellation, some 6,500 to 7,000 light years from Earth. And that means that the light that we see was shown around the time of Moses? That's crazy. The gas and dust are in the process of creating new stars, while also being eroded by the light from nearby stars that have recently formed. So we're to believe that a God so big and powerful that he could create something like this has taken the time and the energy to know my middle name is James? Why would he even care? And while I think these are actually some real and understandable reasons, I believe that he does. I believe that he cares for me and for you. And I believe that he knows not just my name, but he knows yours as well. And that he has our back. And here's why I think that. Fakeness is literally the opposite of how Jesus lived. He got personal with basically everyone he met. He knew their names and their stories. And one of those people who Jesus interacted with that helps me believe that God is a personal God who knows our names is a guy named Zacchaeus. Now, we'll be talking about Zacchaeus for the next few weeks. So to give us a head start, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, which might not seem like a huge deal in our culture. But back then, tax collectors were basically considered scammers and traitors. First off, Zacchaeus was a Jewish guy working for the Roman Empire, an entire nation that basically bullied the Jewish people. And that's bad enough, but tax collectors weren't exactly stand-up dudes. They'd always collect more than what was actually owed, and they pocketed the rest. A tax collector was kind of like the guy that steals the money that you're collecting for a school fundraiser so he can buy more energy drinks for himself. And this guy was a chief tax collector. Not good, right? The worst of the worst. So at this point in Jesus' life, he had gone from being a casual carpenter's son to being a pretty big deal. And he was known for all of these miracles that he'd perform and powerful messages that he'd given. And so by this point, basically everywhere he went, crowds would gather to try and get a glimpse of this rabbi, Jesus, who was healing people. And that's what happened when he was passing through the town of Jericho on his way to Jerusalem and met this guy named Zacchaeus. So here's how the interaction is recorded by Luke, a guy who interviewed real people who witnessed Jesus' life and ministry. So we're going to read Luke 19, 5 through 6. So when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. So let's break this down a little bit. Out of this giant crowd following Jesus to Jerusalem and the giant crowd of people in Jericho just trying to get a peek of Jesus as he passes through, Jesus stops and chats with Zacchaeus. And maybe the most hated man in the whole town, and Jesus talks with him. And this is such a huge deal. Getting this kind of attention from Jesus is crazier than if your favorite celebrity randomly started following you on Instagram and commenting on all of your pictures. And not only did Jesus call out the guy who was watching from the tree, but did you notice that Jesus called him by his name? He didn't say, oh, hey, hey, big guy over there, or hey, you. He called Zacchaeus by name. Then not only does Jesus call him by name, but Jesus invites himself over to Zacchaeus' house. 
And everyone else knows how much of an honor this is. And, and look how they respond, all right? This is Luke 19, verse 7. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Okay, maybe you wouldn't use the word grumble, but basically they were being haters. This was a guy they didn't like. Maybe nobody liked. Nobody would have wanted to be seen hanging out with him, and yet Jesus goes straight towards him. But real talk, why do we care? Because this isn't just a story about Zacchaeus. It's about Jesus and how he treats people. He paid attention to the guy on the sidelines, the guy who annoyed everyone else, the guy nobody was noticing, the guy I bet nobody cared to try to learn his name. The guy that Jesus made sure to know and use his name. And, and by the way, he does the same for you. Jesus knows your name too. And this is how God sees us. Yes, he is the God that created the whole universe and everything in it. Yes, he is the God who has always been around and our brain can't even comprehend that. He also knows you personally. Okay, all of this might feel a little ridiculous to you. Maybe the whole idea of faith feels a little cray and a little far-fetched. And that's okay. Like Zacchaeus, the best thing for some of us to do this week is to find a way to see for ourselves what Jesus is like. Zacchaeus probably had no intention of totally changing his life when he first got up on that tree. But he, just, but he was just taking the first step towards seeing Jesus for himself. So no matter what you think about God or faith or Christians, I want you to know this. It's personal because Jesus knows your name. It's personal because Jesus knows your name. For some people, that doesn't always sit well. You might have questions about that, and you might have doubts about that, and that's okay. But what would it look like for you to, to hop up in a tree to get a better look, to rethink or reimagine what God is like, to start asking some of those questions? Maybe those questions would sound like this. Like, what is God like, really? Or, or what does God say about me? Or what does God say about the people around me? Basically, Jesus changed the way everybody thought about God. There's just something that happens when we recognize that this God of the universe is a personal God. It changed Zacchaeus' life. It's already changed the lives of so many others. And it doesn't stop there. We've talked about how powerful it is to be known personally by God, that he knows your name, he knows you, and he cares about you. But if that's true for you, that's also true for the person next to you who might be watching with you right now, and your siblings, and your parents, and that kid at school that you avoid, or that teacher that you just can't stand. And here's what I'm getting at, all right? A relationship with Jesus is always personal. It's always personal. So let me ask, how can we make it personal for others? Your piano teacher, your lacrosse coach, the person you know in your science class, the girl who somehow always ends up in your group projects, the guy who gets on your nerves, your best friend's little brother, the guy who maybe forgot your name that one time. They all matter just like you. And here's why that's a big deal. The people around you may not know God cares about them personally until you care about them personally. The best way to do this may start with some of the easiest steps that you've ever heard, all right? The first one is to learn their names. Simple as that. Learn their names. Second one, learn the right way to pronounce their names. Here's something you should know. If your name is something like John, you may not have experienced something like what I'm about to tell you. And this is a bigger deal than you may think. And you know how annoying it is when someone writes your name wrong on your Starbucks cup? Or that substitute teacher who reads your name off a roster in a super weird way? 
Now imagine that happening every day or every week times 10. Awful, right? All right, here's the third one. Use their names when you see them. Use their names when you see them. It's simple as that. I get it. This seems so basic, but that's why it's a big deal. Knowing someone's name is the absolute simplest thing that we can do to communicate that someone matters. And if someone feels like they don't matter, it can also have a huge impact. So an easy way to do this is with people younger than you. Think about a couple years ago. What if you had some upperclassmen who genuinely took an interest in you and your life? How would, how would that have made you feel? Upperclassmen, do, do that for some freshmen or sophomores. Freshmen and sophomores, find some middle schoolers that you can invest in or at least begin to call by name. We have a personal God. He also happens to be a personal God who is also mind-blowingly powerful, ridiculously creative, and overly graceful. But he still knows your name and he calls you by it. And one of the greatest ways that we can point people to this kind of personal God is by modeling what it looks like to be personal with others. That's why we have life groups, by the way, which will be starting back up this next week. And we believe every person here is loved and known personally by Jesus. And because of that, we want you to always have a group of people who know you personally, who know your name and know your story. No one should come in the door and feel like they don't fit in or nobody knows them. Jesus always made it personal with the people around him. And you can too by simply knowing their names. So let me pray. Father God, I just pray that we are challenged by this. To actually get to know people personally, we have to really get to know their names. Just start there. So God, I pray that this can, this can make a difference in our community around us as people are actually showing that they care and they want to get to know people personally by actually just starting by getting to know their names, Lord. So I just pray that you give us uh, a better understanding, a better uh, memory to remember people's names so that we can be better at this. And may we be light, a light for you out into this community by the way that we love and treat other people personally. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. We'll be back with you next week. Bye. Thanks, Tyler. I hope you guys are encouraged by that message. I know that God cares about you personally, and you should care about others too, and take the time to learn their names. Now, please take a moment to fill out the Connect card linked in the description. That way, we can stay connected with you guys and pray for you throughout the week. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok, which are both linked in the description as well. Lastly, we have a few changes to announce. On Sunday, January 24th, we're moving back inside. The week before, we'll be starting our in-person services that includes our life groups. On Tuesday nights for high school students and Wednesday nights for middle school. Because of this, our services will be posted here on YouTube on Tuesday nights. What we normally do on Sundays, worship and a message, will now be done at our midweek services. On Sundays, we'll now have discussion groups here at church. Hope to see you guys then. Have a great week. Bye.